right now um sister soldier she's on the line hello hey. hello welcome to bcast one this is uh miss c is this sister soldier yes it is hi hello. how are you hello. i'm fine how are you i'm good thank you um thanks for calling in um we actually met at your uh, book signing there in harlem a couple of weeks ago I was just uh, letting the panel know, just getting them a little bit up to speed with what you've been working on as far um, as your books. And uh, your latest book is uh, Sister Soldier, A Moment of Silence, and it's uh, Midnight Three. Uh, do you want to give us a little bit of background on that book? So, yes. Uh, most people are aware that I wrote uh, The Coldest Winter Ever right. in 1998. It was published. Right. And... That particular book was a really huge novel, sold about two million copies. Wow. And in that book, there was a character named Midnight. And a lot of the women around the whole globe that were readers of the coldest winter ever fell in love with this character. So I decided to give him his own series, his own voice, and turn him from a minor character from right. the coldest winter ever into a major character. So there have been three Midnight novels so far. The first one is Midnight Against the Love Story. Mm -hmm. The second one is Midnight and the Meaning of Love. And the third one is A Moment of Silence, Midnight Three. Uh, this book is about a young uh, Brooklyn cat who originally comes from the Sudan, mm -hmm. which is a country on the continent of Africa. He is a Muslim, mm -hmm. um, and it, he lives with his mother, his two wives, and his sister. Right. And so uh, he's usually a calm, cool, confident, uh, handle his business type of young man. And uh, one moment of rage throws him into a situation that, uh, he absolutely did not plan for. And he is now uh, faced with the same stresses that a lot of the brothers in the community in the hood are faced with, and that's police and handcuffs and chains and, and uh, you know, prison and COs and danger and liars and injustice and right. the whole thing. So right. it's a very, very... Um, it's an action adventure. It's a thriller. It's a powerful love story. It's just a, a very uh, explosive novel, for lack of a better way of saying it. Right. I, and I just started reading my copy, um, and I do find it um, engaging. You said something very interesting, and it um, it definitely resonated with me. Um, Midnight's character from The Coldest Winter Ever, he is intriguing. He is Absolutely intriguing. So you were saying that um, a lot of people, a lot of women in general, were interested in um, a little bit more information about Midnight, who he is, because he does seem like a mystery. Yeah. Well, in the coldest winter ever, he wasn't. He he was the man that went to Santiago, the main character. You know, was in love with. Right. He, he was her 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 first love, her her deep crush. But she wasn't actually involved in a relationship with him. So right. he wasn't really a major character. He was kind of a minor character, which goes to show what kind of a, a man he, he is because just a little drop of him, you right, know, right. <laughs> caused a big reaction. Exactly right, because he wasn't a major character, but he was so intriguing. And there was a mystery about him, and his he was very cool towards her. And I think that probably made, um, obviously it made him more desirable um, for her, but it also kind of like piques your interest, I think, as a woman, because when, you know, it's like when men chase you, that, that can be kind of like a turnoff. But when a guy is, you got to work a little bit, it does make you... Um, um, uh, you know, just like a little bit more interested in, and you want to know um, what's going on with him. He's extremely intelligent, Midnight, and that's the other thing that I think um, resonated with a lot of women as well. You know, it's funny. Uh, that's the two 
2015 take on it because uh, you said a woman would, would want to work for it and, and don't like when the men chase them. When actually, you know, back in the day, it was the men that worked for the women. Mm, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have a question. Can I ask her? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, okay. Sister Soldier, how you doing? This is uh, Wonder. Peace. Peace. Listen, well, I have a few questions. Um, one is midnight. Is this uh, is this person a person that uh, reflects someone that you that you knew in your real life, or is it a combination of a couple of brothers? Or no, this is a novel. So uh, okay. when you're writing a novel, uh, it really takes the power of imagination. Gotcha. But of course, an author can only give you what the author has to give. So I think uh, what is true about it is, you know, there are a lot of young Muslim men and women and people and families in this in this country, in the United States of America. Right. And uh, they do have a unique energy and a specific set of beliefs. Mm -hmm. And so I think that that's what makes the character resonate so powerfully. I think we live in a society where uh, we don't really expect each other to believe anything. Right. And even right. if we say we believe something, we don't expect anybody to do anything about what they believe. So I think because this character uh, comes from a country where the faith is actually the law right. and it's just you know how everybody is raised and how everybody lives to the degree where you know all of his aunts and uncles and his grandparents and everybody's living the same way because it is one one faith one religion one philosophy so um i think that this is a powerful notion for young people in America, because you, you can meet somebody, you know, in a club or something that tells you they have some specific religion, but it doesn't impact how they behave or what they will and will not do. Very right, true. Right. Very true. Right. My, my, my other question to you is, are there any particular, uh, I guess, lessons or morals of, of this story that you would like people to extract from it, to walk away from it? No, I think uh, uh, one thing I love about books is it's a very personal, a very intimate mm -hmm. experience, you know. And when I first started writing books, one of the the most powerful uh, persuading things for me to start writing was that people don't tend to like lectures. They don't like to be speeched gotcha. at or gotcha. lectured to or gotcha. talked at True. or given instructions. But the thing about a book is that if you are a great storyteller, you can create a story that connects with each reader differently depending upon where they are in their life, where they are in their thinking, where they are in their emotions. So uh, my writing style is multidimensional, mm -hmm. which means that whether you're 98 years old or, or 9 years old mm -hmm. or 29 years old, uh, everybody's going to walk away with something different when they read the novel. Right, okay. Gotcha. Oh, Thank so, you. Sister Soldier, this is uh, Black Ops. How are you doing? Peace, how you doing? Good, good. good. My question to you, and I, I'm a bit of a writer. I'm no Sister Soldier by any stretch, <laughs> so let me not even try and make that comparison. But uh, let me ask you, because uh, it's very apparent that you pour your heart and soul into your, your writing uh, so that you connect with your readers. I know as I had wrote my uh, book, I know I had to step away because I was overcome uh, with emotions at time and what I was putting to paper. Was there ever a time as you were writing any of the any, <coughs> any of your works that you had to step away and just say, hey, you know what, let me uh, let me step back for a little bit. That's that's an emotional roller coaster. Well, um, I probably don't step away. I probably step deeper into it. Okay. <laughs> but right. one of the side effects of that is that I experienced the stress of my character. Right. Mm. And so uh, that's, that's kind of the downside, you know. Wow. Uh, when I'm dealing with issues like prison or solitary confinement or violent scenes, you know, uh, I actually feel it very, very deeply and it, it stresses me out, you know. Wow. Um, 
and then I have to try to recuperate from it. <laughs> right, mm. it, exactly. I know there was at one point that I stepped away from my right. Mine's is an autobiography, but I would stepped away for uh, six months from mine uh, for those very reasons that you're talking about. Sometimes you just have to say, "Hey, wow, let me uh, let me catch my breath on this." So, so six months is a long time, though. Yeah, it it, it was. Uh, Maybe I can get that you a copy. Was, that was a real moment of silence. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it, it, it's a deep book. I'd like to get you, uh, I'd get you a copy, um, but it, it's your moment, so we won't talk about my book, but um, I can relate to what you're saying. Sister, you. Sister Soldier, this is Joe. Welcome. Thanks. How you doing? I'm good. I'm just looking over... Um, a little bit of the book and I love that you use I, I'm I'm Muslim as well and I love the way that you named his mother the Uma which is like our worldwide community here <laughs> um, okay. I'm looking forward to to reading this book and it is it is something when you meet Muslims from another country and what their laws are and the way that they live as which is somewhat different from what some of us do here in America so I read The Coldest Winter Ever a long time ago, and I'm looking at this list. I think I need to s start over. I'm going to get order these books online tonight. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know that that that's good. I'm I'm grateful that you're going to to read a moment of silence. I just wanted to say though that you know uh, in all of my research, I do a lot of research for every novel because mm -hmm. I'm writing about things that are. Um, meaningful and sensitive and important. Right. And in all of my research of Islam, there's uh, only one God, there's only one Quran, yes. and um, the laws for a Muslim overseas should be the same laws for a Muslim in the United States Absolutely. of America. Wow, okay. Absolutely. Okay. And I, and, I, and I know that every culture, you know, we have certain little things that we do differently from each other, but that's culture, that's not faith, but mm -hmm. the faith itself is the same. Right, and here right. It's, it's just that different things that uh, we're not able to do legally that they can in Islamic countries, so... Well, you mean like having more than one wife? Right, so you can do that <laughs> Islamically, um, but legally, is you, you know, you can't do it. Right. So um, well, there are some states in the U.S. where you can yeah. have more than one wife, but it's not a it's not a federal um, allowance. Right. Right. And what states would? No, I'm just. <laughs> hey, um, <laughs> <laughs> hey, sister soldier, I, I'm sure yes. you know people have asked you this question over and over again, um, and if they have, I, I, I haven't heard you know you give an answer, but. It, I would like to know, because I heard some years back that The Coldest Winter Ever was go going to be made into a movie. Um, can you tell us wh where that's at right now? Is it, is it still going to happen? I or? thought I saw a trailer for it um, online. No, the trailer is bogus. Oh, oh thank you for right. the, yeah, Something okay. related. And, and, okay. and you know what, what's funny about the trailer to me is that what that is is a photoshopped, like, um, clips of movies that most African Americans have already seen. So I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why when you look at the trailer, you don't get flashbacks and say, oh, that's Megan Good from such well, and such a film. Yeah, well, you, know, you know, it's, it's funny that you said that because um, when I did see the trailer, I'm like, this trailer is kind of weak. You know, no offense, but now I, now I understand why because I'm like, this is not done very well. So, okay, but right. what is... Um, and the soundtrack is horrible. <laughs> right, right, right. It's the, even even the casting of that trailer is it is you know a little weird. So glad and thank you for clearing that up. Um, so yeah. what is the um, status? Is is um, the coldest winter ever going to be made into a movie? I thought I saw Jada Pinkett Smith attached to that project. The coldest winter ever is definitely going to be made into a film. It has been optioned by a producer. It's going to be independently produced. The budget will be somewhere between 10 and $15 million. Okay. And uh, right now the producers are assembling the film finance and okay. hopefully we'll be able to go into production by the end of 2016. Uh, Jada Pinkett Smith is not 
involved in this uh, okay. current production. Initially in 2001 or two, she, uh, Jada and I both got a deal at HBO. Okay. But the administration at HBO changed, and when they changed, they decided not to proceed with the project. Okay. So now it's back in, in my hands, and... Uh, and we are and we are moving forward with it. That's great. Nice. That's a very mm-hmm. anticipated movie. Yeah, Everybody will come out and see that. that. Yeah. yeah. Everyone yeah. loves to see yeah. that. So um I have a question and this is, you know, here comes the controversy. Um there is a Republican candidate running for president that made a statement that um he thinks that all Muslims should be barred from entering into the United States. Any thoughts on that? Well, I think that particular candidate uh, has made a lot of outrageous statements. Right. Not only in reference to Islam or Muslims, but to a lot of things. Mm. You know, I think a lot of people may not be aware, but... When you are seeking to occupy the highest uh, seat in government, uh, the president of the United States, the so-called leader of the free world, there are some characteristics that you should embody. You should have, uh, first of all, intelligence. Mm -hmm. You should have grace. You should have compassion. Mm. You should have statesmanship. Right. You should have communication skills. Right. And you should have a firm grasp on global history. Right. Uh, so that you are not just making these kind of explosive comments mm-hmm. and irresponsible comments and offensive comments. I right. think in a time uh, like the time that we face right now, it takes leadership that uh, is concerned about uh, everybody's well-being. It's concerned about peace. I know that the economy is not great, and I know that uh, the country, the U.S., we have very high debt. And so a lot of times people who study history know that in times of high debt, uh, a lot of politicians want to have war. Right. So there can be all of this spending and contracts and money and, you know, sending everybody's sons off to fight in some foreign land. But I don't mm-hmm. think that this is intelligent, uh, compassionate. Uh, it's just not. It's not great go- global leadership. So right. I think the candidate has made it clear um, that he's not suitable for the position. And I think that he has uh, aroused the um, anxieties and interests of a lot of uh, white people who feel marginalized mm-hmm. for some reason or another. Right. But I think you'd have to be pretty naive to think that Donald Trump is the same as the average poor white working class person. <laughs> right, right. That he gives a damn about you. I right. love how, I love how you knew how, exactly who I was talking about. <laughs> right. That it wasn't oh, a mystery, right? Yeah. It was pretty obvious. He, right. He made himself loud and clear. Exactly. Exactly. Um thank you for those remarks and thank you for um thanks for calling in. Where can we reach you at, Sister Soldier? Uh, what do you mean? You like can go online, to you have a web presence, uh-huh. Facebook page. Okay. Sistersoldier.com is okay. my website. And you have to spell my name right. It's S-I-S-T-E-R. Everybody want to get fancy and drop A's and add right. A's and drop the A's. <laughs> <laughs> no. It's Sister Soldier. Uh-huh. And spell soldier, S-O-U-L-J-A-H. Not soldier with just an A. Um, and on that is all my contact information. I also have Twitter. I'm pretty active on Twitter. Oh, okay. My Twitter name is at Soldier Books. And I just got my my Instagram name back. Some imposter head sister soldier hemmed up. But okay. I just oh, got wow. It back. Okay. And so we're verified now. Okay. And I have Facebook, but I don't really do too much Facebook. I'm I'm really a Twitter person. Oh, okay. You're really on Twitter. Okay. All right. 
um, we really do appreciate you calling in. Um, yes, thank, you thank you so yes, much. You um, and I know I was a pain, um, but <laughs> <laughs> I thank you for calling in. And I'm sorry I missed you in Newark. I, I don't know what happened that day. I knew you were coming because I live up there, and I missed you. But I'll be looking to see because I I want my books autographed. <laughs> Okay. Well, my tour, my whole tour schedule is on SisterSoldier.com. Right, right. And, and I send any Sister Soldier books. There'll be no snobbery at my signings. So no, okay. no, you were great. Yeah, you were fabulous at the signing. We, I, we were at the Sisters um, Bookstore up in Harlem. And first of all, that was a fabulous bookstore. Um, and the signing itself was, it was really nice. I enjoyed it. The Sister Soldier, one more thing. <laughs> this is Wonder. Yeah. Um, I, I think we need to reveal that secret that Midnight is really me that you, you were writing about. <laughs> Let me tell you something. Every time I do an interview, there's a man, there's a, a male interviewer who either asks me, am I your Midnight? Oh. Or, or they say, can I, can I play Midnight? Right. Well, you know I'm Midnight, but I think that's beautiful. I'm glad that you brothers are striving in that direction because Midnight is a beautiful man. Yes, he is. Hey, they say it all about black Thank ops, you. but I'm going to leave that Thank alone. <laughs> Thank you so much for calling in. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you. Have a good evening. Thank you. Give it up. Sister Soldier chilling on BKS1 Radio.com. Let's talk about it.